Um, as I'm uh, Indra said, um, my name is Sam Kuchera, and I will give a talk about uh, business models for rolling data. Um, before I start, um, uh, let me say that uh, this topic is uh, probably still in, in its infancy, so please don't expect <laughs> that, uh, me to give any precise advices on how to uh, start uh, bu your business with linked data. But I would like to continue with what, uh, what which was in what was said in the first presentation today, uh, because we had some really nice interaction in, in what the business model is, and I think that we read the same books with uh, Professor uh, Wengan. So. I will be uh, shorter this part, and I will talk mostly about two parts of business models, uh, uh, which is the value propositions and revenue streams, and both uh, in relation to uh, linked data. So uh, we already had uh, a definition of business model today. So uh, I, in any way, I believe that uh, all of you have some idea what the business model is. Um, so I think that what is really nice is this tool, which is the canvas that you uh, we've already seen into the, uh, and which tells us what are the components that uh, uh, you should think of when you are designing some new or redesigning some existing business model. Maybe we should, uh, after what we discussed, uh, should add some risks or some uh, obstacles that might occur uh, during uh, your task to making some um, business model into operation. And as I uh, mentioned, I will talk about the value proposition in, in linked data, which I understand as uh, the value that is, well, is, is actually in the data or that is based on linked data that you as a provider uh, offer to some customer segments of your choice through some various channels and maybe with some help of some partners. And then you, of course, want to receive some value in exchange for doing so. So I will talk about revenue streams. Maybe in our case it's not uh, monetary revenue streams in, in this uh, sense, but I will take it a bit broader into some very really indirect, uh, into really some indirect uh, values that you can achieve by provision of linked data or some related stuff. So actually what are the possible uh, value propositions in the market? I think that what seems really obvious uh, in the linked data domain or maybe in any uh, domain are, the, are these four uh, topics or four aspects that uh, enter entrepreneurs can take and try to make their value that they offer to some customers. Uh, it can be the data itself, linked data in this case, or it can be some applications built on top of the data or some services that are uh, uh, offered um, that utilize some data on the background or that uh, uh, help other companies to publish data or products. And of course, as in uh, any other domain, we need some infrastructure and some tools that will help us to utilize and make use of the data or to produce the data. So if I may borrow an example from Lukas' uh, presentation, um, then they crawled uh, the social media platforms. They transfer the data into linked data set, and then they provide some analytics. So I, I think that for some companies, even uh, the data set itself might be valuable enough to pay for it, to have all the data from all the platforms on, on the people who are talking about, for, for example, about the brands. It might be I valuable enough to pay for it, to get the data, and then whatever they want to analyze um, in the data. Or they can build an application which allows again a company to, uh, with few clicks, to uh, design their own uh, analysis of the data in some simple form. Or they can uh, create a report for some company based on the data they have, so they can provide the services. And of course, uh, they can build an infrastructure which uh, harvests the data and provides some access uh, access to uh, to the harvested data. So I think that this, uh, even these four aspects can be combinated so you can provide infrastructure as a service. So this allows you to think, uh, to creatively think and combine things to uh, get some value that you will offer to your cost possible customers. Uh, for me, there is an open question whether, for example, ontologies, vocabularies, schemas itself uh, can represent some uh, value that, is, uh, that you can possibly sell to someone. I think that, that 
yes, that the, the schema uh, schemas uh, has uh, uh, the value of it by itself, but the uh, question is whether it is enough for a uh, variable business model. We, uh, in the discussion in the morning, uh, it was said that uh, the time and uh, the idea that uh, some really clever people will design ontologies for some specific domain is probably gone, and um, it all shifts uh, to crowd where people are designing ontologies on the fly where in cases when they need them. So uh, it's a question whether we can have enough uh, valuable ontologies to, to, to sell uh, by itself. Now, how, how can you possibly uh, get some revenue based on what I talked before, on the data or the applications or services? Uh, so, for example, today, uh, um, because uh, linked data is really prominent in this academic field, and the research is driven by grants and subsidies, so I think that uh, this is the one of the most important revenue streams today. And uh, which is uh, some kind of similar uh, is the sponsorship or donation, uh, which uh, which is can, can we can uh, have an inspiration in how the open source software is developing sometimes when uh, a foundation or some non-profit uh, entity uh, built the software which offers to wide uh, community of users for to uh, to use. And uh, for example, for and we can go back to the linked data domain. If, for example, some data in some domain is uh, really valuable to a group of subjects, uh, they can uh, use this sponsorship as a way of cost sharing, uh, in which uh, they will sponsor uh, some, for example, non-profit uh, organization that will develop the uh, schema for the domain and will provide some basic data then all of those who provide the sponsorship can utilize so they can use this as a uh, cost sharing uh, model. And of course, um, if there is any value added uh, in the data or an application, you can try to sell it directly to your customers, which is probably one of the most uh, direct revenue streams here. Uh, sometimes, uh, which I find very interesting as an idea, as a possible idea, is the commission on sales, profit, or some realities, uh, which, uh, which is based on an idea that I have a data and I do not want to produce any services on application. I do not want to even sell the data directly, but I will provide it to someone who has some clever idea or some innovative idea or how to monetize it. And I will uh, get some commission on, the, on its sales uh, that you will generate through the use of my data. So it's a bit kind of investment, it's maybe less direct than the direct sale of data. Uh, there's some bit of risk, but I think that it can uh, be used in a situation when two parties, one person can provide the data, another provides some innovative idea on how to use it. We'll sh shift to some uh, indirect uh, revenue streams. Uh, the first one, which may be uh, some very prominent in the future uh, is, the is that uh, the production of data might actually uh, attract an attraction of some possible uh, customers for some other product than the data itself or than the application itself. Uh, so you can use it as some kind of advertisement on, uh, as uh, something that uh, will bring users to some complementary uh, products or services that you can sell them. Also some there has been some discussion about uh, advertised based base models. Uh, one, uh, one idea was that you can, uh, the data on the web can drive users to that website and you, you, you can show ads to them uh, while they download data. Um, more uh, interesting question was if we can uh, place uh, adds into the data itself, but um, the uh, answer, to the result of discussion was that it might be quite difficult because uh, uh, if you provide data, it's quite easy to filter out the ads, so uh, but it's a question whether the in this way the ads can reach the those who were uh, the target. Uh, the CEO based uh, is a really uh, 
indirect revenue stream. It maybe does not bring really any money, uh, but uh, it should be used that uh, you will provide the data or some st or some structured data on your website in order to get better results in to the search engines that will. Uh, and another step will drive more uh, attention and more users to your website. Um, maybe this th this might be uh, this m the importance of this model might rise in the future as as uh, providers like Google uh, will try to uh, will start to really utilize the web of data uh, to enhance their uh, their uh, search results or to benefit those who provide this uh, structured data. Uh, Another kind of uh, possible revenue stream may be brand building, which is really, really indirect uh, in a way that uh, you will try to provide data or some application built on, to on top of linked data in order to get some positive uh, response from some target audience. For example, from some professionals that uh, you buy, sell other products or services or that you want to bring to your conferences or whatsoever. And um, if we think uh, about, uh, we should not think about the customers as only the external customers that are somewhere in the market, but uh, linked data can have an internal customers even in the organization. So uh, you can use this, uh, you, you can use the linked data in order to better utilize the data you have, to better utilize the knowledge that you have in your organization, to uh, improve the process in which you develop uh, applications. Um, so you can achieve pos you can possibly achieve uh, some cost reduction or performance improvements of your processes through use of linked data, which is probably not a revenue stream uh, as such, but it, it's not a kind of value that an organization can achieve by utilization of linked data. Actually, um, I was heavily I influenced by some existing models m when I was preparing this presentation. I think that uh, this Brinker Brinker's business models is um, probably one of the that is the most known. Um, and this causes more than more than dimension than uh, I was uh, that I'm um, uh, referring to today. Um, and, he and these models are probably more like uh, advice how you can start a business uh, with linked data, even if they don't consider all the other than possible dimensions like uh, how you will uh, maintain a relationship with your customers. But what is, a, uh, what is important to notice is that Brinker also uh, disti disti distinguishes between uh, four types of possible customer segments. Uh, or those who actually pay or bring some money uh, uh, to your organization if you provide the linked data. And uh, there are some very generic customers, but uh, you'll find that uh, you can offer uh, paid services based on linked data or provide linked data uh, to your, your partners, uh, some advertisers, or even to, uh, as we mentioned, the subsidized uh, services or the grants. Uh, which is actually gov gov some government or EU who uh, uh, provides these grants. Um, this is an another concept which is quite similar to, to the Brinkus model, which also distinguishes between direct and indirect models. Um, uh, I think that in general is the quite the same. So I think that this gives us an idea that may sometimes this model maybe in the future will convert to some uh, a set of typical ways how companies will do their business in linked data domain. So, um, in order to conclude, uh, um, I would like to say that yes, uh, we got uh, many possibilities on uh, how to do a business uh, with linked data. Um, and I'm personally very interest, uh, interested w in the future development in this area as the linked data will grow in, uh, in adoption. So we will see actually both of these combination of these factors I is actually viable and which will uh, stay in the, in, in the state of great idea but no implementation. Um, when I, uh, 
I presented some of the direct revenue streams, some indirect revenue streams in my presentation. And uh, I think that the direct revenue streams are more suitable or more likely to succeed in, uh, for example, for applications or services because uh, they are really uh, they really bring some value added that is uh, easily uh, presented to by the uh, by the market. So uh, and this this is something that you can charge for. And even tools or some infrastructure, uh, as in other domains, like uh, it's come on to charge for it. For example, you can think of Amazon charging for their infrastructure, so we can uh, have an analogous services, for example, in the future that will provide the infrastructure uh, as a service for linked data. Um, as a question, uh, how it is likely uh, for data sets itch itself to be really charged? Uh, we know that the data sets are uh, valuable in itself, but uh, in linked data, the value of the data set grows with a uh, number of links going inward and outward of, the, of this data set. So uh, you actually really, if you need, really want to have a valuable data set, you really need to have it linked to something. And more links, the better. So it seems that it, this might, uh, uh, that open data sets might at actually uh, are probably to attract more linkers and receive a, a higher value. But uh, it's something that uh, uh, reduces the, pro the probability actually to charge for, uh, for, for access to the data set. So I think that the indirect revenue streams, like uh, those that will drive users to some complementary services or to some tools, application that you built on top of the data, will uh, be more likely for those who are really want to base their model on the data itself. So. Um, this is uh, enough for me to, for now. Um, um, I will happily answer your questions if you have any. Thank you for your presentation. Do we have any questions for the speaker? Um, <coughs> like, uh, you have payment for linked data as one of the possible direct revenue. Uh, which is also like known as data markets. So I, I've been following this for a while, and uh, like to my conclusion was this doesn't seem to be a successful business model. And so my question is, uh, do you agree with this? Uh, and can you think of reasons why why data markets don't seem to be like thriving? Uh, yes, I, I would I would agree with this because. I think that it's really, uh, as I said, it is very difficult to sell the data itself. Uh, some uh, uh, maybe in some specific uh, areas, uh, it's another case. Uh, but uh, in linked data, I think that uh, because you need uh, links that coming inwards and outwards to your data set, so I think that this uh, really ni works nicely in open environment where is there are no barriers for others to link to your data, to grab your data, uh, enhance it, and so on, and which actually is uh, contradictory to that you want to build some barrier in uh, which means that you force someone to pay at least a minimal amount of money for access. I think that uh, because uh, if uh, we achieve some really uh, critical mass of data, it will be quite easy to uh, avoid your data set which is actually paid, pay, uh, paid for uh, with some other data. So it, will, uh, it might end up in a situation that you have really valuable data set, but nobody uses it because they can combine two or three more sources which are uh, uh, free, or, uh, free of charge, and, and they will provide them the same service as your uh, data set that you w wanted to charge for. Any other questions? Um, how is this different from the qu uh, from the problems that content providers are solving, like news newspapers or yeah, organizations like this? Well, to be honest, I have never thought about it in this way. Um, well. There are, I think that only some of the really well-established uh, newspaper agencies were successful in uh, creation of uh, some charge-based access models to their uh, to their newspaper articles. 
some of them used some hybrid approach and you can access uh, some use for free and if you, for example, exceed some quota then you have to pay. Um, I think that maybe this seems possible as some, uh, even for linked data, I can imagine a situation when you will, uh, for example, provide uh, a data set with some limited amount of access uh, for free of charge and then you will charge for some, uh, for some uh, extra service, uh, extra level of access, for example, um, some extra amount of uh, uh, times of access or downloads or maybe um, you will provide it with some other de uh, degree of uh, data quality. So you can provide the raw data with no, uh, with no uh, polishing uh, for free, and then you will provide the same data uh, which is actually uh, polished, cleared, and uh, which is guaranteed uh, for, some re and for, some for money, for example. And it seems similar, yes, th th it quite makes sense to me and might seem similar to what uh, the news agencies are doing, providing some value added uh, news articles or content uh, as a paid service on top of their free uh, accessible content on their website. 